Hello everyone, welcome back. This time we're in a mall. We're going to a comic show. I can't believe it. We were in a store called Retro Reset. This is owned by a couple of my buddies, Shannon and Clay. Super nice guys and do super great deals. Go check them out if you ever get a chance. This is a show I literally learned of the day of. I was just scrolling through Facebook, saw one of my local dealers I was going to this show and I was like, hold up, wait a minute, some may write, I need to be at this show. And man, I'm glad I did because the deals were here and there were some awesome books. First thing up, I saw this nice little Secret Wars lot, little Swamp Thing book. So a lot of these guys are shop owners and dealers that are around my area. Some of the places that I have gone to hunting, these are the guys that own these, sh these stores. And a couple of these guys I've never met before, but apparently have watched my videos, specifically this gentleman here. Uh, super nice guy and the lady here to his right. I don't know their relationship, but they were uh, the dealers for this these few long boxes here. So uh, it, it, he, he basically recognized me, which is kind of funny. Like it was the first time somebody was like, hey, you're Sticky Goose. And I was like, sir, yes, sir. But anyway, I'm digging through his long box and um, I'm finding some interesting books, pretty good books here. Um, Spider-Man 2099, there was a couple of those in there. Um, and then this Barack Obama cover, which is uh, kind of a famous cover, he had a $9 price tag. I asked him, I was like, uh, what do you think about that one? He says, uh, you, you can just have that one. He's like, I'm trying to give that one away. So it was kind of funny. We bonded for a moment there. But uh, if you guys watch my video about me going to a store and it called Pension Pennies, and then I did that little bike ride um, before that, this was the guy that was the shop owner who was not there. So I find this little gem there. This is Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number six. This is the first appearance of the Luchador. So there's some spec behind that. We'll talk about that later on. Um, I don't know how many copies of Spider-Man 2099 were in there, but there was a bunch. This is a full long box of Spider-Man. Uh, Spider Spider-Man. This was uh, the Craven book. I think that's part of the Craven's Last Hunt. I can't remember if that's the part three or four. Uh, this was a DC box. Some nice Batman books in here. Some action comics, some Superman books. You know, those heavily printed 90s books that are in like literally every single collection ever known to man. Uh, the Batman books kind of caught my eye. They were in that like, what's that, like 50 cent, 60 cent range, uh, Death in the Family. You know, these are books that I'll scoop them up if like, you know, they're like $3, $5, but I don't know the exact price on some of those. Um, this was Batman 641. This is the book after the first appearance of the Red Hood. Um, that one kind of caught my eye. Spoiler alert, I already had this book and I made a mistake. I, I shouldn't have got that. Uh, they had the Batman Beyond stuff, but no Batman Beyond number one. There was a Looney Tunes box, but I don't collect Looney Tunes, so I didn't really mess with that. This was the dollar box. Um, there was not a whole lot in here, so I'm just going to save your guys' time and not really show you guys much of this. Um, there was uh, a, a little kid next to me looking at Pokemon cards, and I kind of like um, whisper over to him, I'm like, when are you going to start collecting comics? I was like, you got to pay for your dad's uh, retirement home with that. His, his dad was like my age, so I could like make that joke. But anyway, uh, this is a Star Wars, uh, that Black Kardashian, Cartesian, Kardashian uh, cover. I got that. It was a pretty good price. It had some nice little Star Wars books in here. Um, Star Wars uh, number three, I think there was a number two. First Lando, I think he wanted like 30 bucks for that. I, I thought that was a little much. Uh, some of the good uh, Star Wars Dark Horse stuff. I might have been in the market for some of that if I didn't pick up that massive Star Wars Dark Horse collection that if you guys watch that video, I mean, it's, I mean, it's darn near every single Star, Dark Horse Star Wars book there is. But uh, I love the little Pee Wee Herman doll over there to the right kind of digging too. Uh, I love that Han Solo cover. Um, there was a, what's that? A reprint of uh, first appearance of Doctor Aphra, some Star Wars Legacy stuff. There's a bunch of like minor first appearances in that, but I'm, I've already got copies of those. So I went back over and took a look at the Secret Wars lot. Um, I asked him. Uh, I was like, uh, "Have you read this?" And 
uh, he, he, he said he had watched my video about uh, Secret Wars um, and what books to pick up and my review of it. It was just, it was kind of like a, a weird moment of, um, I'm very thankful and grateful to meet people that have watched my videos in person. It's, it's super special. So if I ever see you at a con or see you at a show or something, please say hello. Um, I'm, I'm friendly. I, I know I'm like an angry old man on the internet, but I am friendly in real life. Um, some A few CGC slabs, some modern stuff. Not really interested. So I go to the next dealers. This was a father and son uh, duo from Huntington. Um, they had the good shit. The real good shit. This is um, Thor number 165. This is the first appearance of him. Later becomes Adam Warlock. And this was a nice, nice copy of that book. This is Captain America number 100. This was kind of like a 3-0. Um, prices were high here. Prices were really high. He had all those raw books. All these books you see in the foreground were in brand new bags and boards. We'll get to those here in a minute. This is Iron Fist number 14. This is the first appearance of Sabretooth. $350 in that condition. Um, those are graded book prices. You know what I mean? Those, those, are, those are not... Those are not raw book prices, and and I I, I kind of talked to him. I didn't say that, but I kind of talked to him about you know what some recent sales were. He he gave me his business card, so I'm gonna. They asked to give them a shout out. So their legacy in Huntington, West Virginia. If you wanna uh, hook up with them, uh, they sell some stuff online. But they did have a lot of back issues for runs that I'm filling. So you know me, I'm getting my CLZ app. Shout out CLZ. They still haven't paid me. Um, CLZ app, I got it open and I am finding my uh, back issues that I'm missing. I mean, I love that. I love having that right there. So, I mean, it, it, you don't you don't have to worry about buying duplicates. And these were nice condition back issues. I didn't mind paying the $3 to $5 because, you know, for all intents and purposes, I mean, these are high end, these are high grade books that are hole fillers for me. So, um, they had the the Todd McFarlane period run whenever he was on Incredible Hulk, and then I think it transfers to Peter David. That's an awesome Doctor Doom uh, Hulk cover. Uh, he had all the major titles: Fantastic Four, Green Arrow. Um, I don't know why I said Green Arrow. Uh, Black Panther, Dare, Daredevil. He had a big run of uh, Master of Kung Fu. I don't think he had the first appearance of Shang Chi though. Uh, some miscellaneous stuff, which I think that was like a nice little run of the Punisher in there. And then um, he had some Silver Surfer. I had that Crime Suspense book. I thought that was like, oh man, there's like a Golden Age tucked in there. Uh, there was like a reprint of TMNT 1. Teen Titans Wedding issue. Um, and then he had some Spider-Man books. I think these, yeah, these were his dollar books. Um, you know, West Coast Avengers relegated to the the dollar bins for all eternity. And then to the right, you see those are some books that the uh, the actual store had. So we'll get to the store books here in a minute. Um, classic dollar book type fodder. There, there might have actually been a book in there looking back on this video. I should have maybe got for a dollar. But anyway, uh, this was uh, the wall books for the shop. The shop doesn't really focus on comics, but they did have some. Uh, this was their little box where it, where they kind of like uh, taped some books together and like trying to sell them all as a, a little bundle there. Nothing nothing really sticking out there. Some 90s X-Men. There's some New Mutants, but way overpriced. Uh, some What If, Spider-Man, some Sensational She-Hulk. I move on, but I come back here, so stay tuned. This is my local shop, um, my buddy that I've gone to conventions with. Um, this is, uh, his, you know, he kind of runs a store, Th these boxes here, this is kind of his newer title stuff that's just come out, but he had some great wall books, specifically this, this is the second appearance of Polaris. Um, is it her first cover appearance? I can't remember if she's on the cover of 49 or not. This is the first time that that um, that that X-Men logo changes, that Jim Steranko X-Men classic, iconic X-Men logo that we know and love. This is a beautiful book. Beautiful book. A little color-breaking fold there in that bottom right-hand corner. Um, but daggone, that was a beautiful book. Silver Age classic book. 
Um, I was being very careful with that. The colors just popped on that. And this is what brought me to this convention. So he kind of posted that wall and I saw that wall and I saw that book and then I saw this. This is the third print, um, but it's not in high grade. I really want a first print of that book. How you can tell is the bottom bottom left hand corner uh, where the, uh, the, the, the new stand barcode would be or the additional art. That's how you can tell them apart. Um, I'm not, I didn't, I really want like something that's at least like an eight, five, uh, if I'm going to buy that book, this is a uh, first absorbing man in a very, very low grade. That's a nice little Thor key, uh, Thor 114, super early Thor issue and absorbing man is, you know, he's a big bad to the Hulk. Um, and he's, he's really kind of a big bad a lot of times in, uh, in a lot of Marvel books. This was another dealer here. They had a lot of those uh, Joker 80th anniversary books. Um, I ended up uh, taking a look at those. I think that's like the origin of Punchline, and then they just had some like more like hundred page giant new books. Nothing really caught my eye. They did have this Elvis figure. I don't know if you guys know or not, but now I'm an Elvis fan now that I watched the movie. So like uh, you know, I, I'm like seeing all the Elvis classics now. Um, he had some uh, trade or hardcover book, The Filth. That's one of the worst comic books I ever read. I need to make a new list after reading that. Uh, this other dealer had some old school like WWF um, posters. Those were kind of interesting. These magic cards caught my eye. You know me. I have to go over here and page page through these magic cards. Um, nothing really stood out. He had a PGX slab. And as soon as I picked this thing up, I mean, the weight of that was significantly heavier than uh, CGC. That's why you saw me shaking it. It was like, oh my gosh, this thing is like dense. I will go back over to the wall books. This is uh, 100 Bullets by Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Rizzo. We'll get back to that here in a minute. I get back into the long box, start digging through some of these books. This was his key books, and then I find this. You know me. I'm a sucker for Pulp Fiction. I'm a sucker for She-Hulk. Love them both. Set that one aside. That is a high-grade copy. Now, if you guys have followed the channel before, you guys know I picked up a copy of that, and I came and I submitted it to CGC, and it came back a 9.6. So I've already got a 9.6 in that book. I really want a 9.8. Uh, that New Mutants um, annual. There was some Invincible Iron Man, some low-numbered Invincible Iron Man books in there. I took a look at those. 15 bucks for 100 bullets number one, two, and three. I mean, dang, that, that was a good deal. Uh, that classic Galactus cover, that was a cool book, but it was just way too much. Um, there were some other decent Silver Age keys in here, but they were priced high, like 15, 25, 20 bucks. I, I'm just not, if it's not like a major key, I'm not starting more Invincible Iron Man. I'm not collecting more of that. There was that Fantastic Four key. I can't remember who that was. But anyway, let's get back to the big, big books. This is Journey into Mystery number 89. Classic, iconic Jack Kirby cover. This was a low-grade copy, but the staples were intact. The centerfold was intact. Book presented very well. Big chunk out of the bottom right. This book has no chance of getting anything higher than a 3.0. Likely would come back like a 2 or 2.5. He wanted $200, $250 for that. No, I'm not. No. First Rhino, um, low grade, you know, 4.0 maybe. I mean, this is a great wall. This is a great wall. This is me looking at that book again. I, I That book just kept just keeps catching my eye. I think it's the origin of Thor also. Uh, they had the first vision. Um, love that cover. Love that book. He, he, they actually like let me come behind the, the, the table there and look at these up close. They were very, very friendly. Tales of Astonish 90, 93, classic Marie Severin cover. X-Men number 14. This is for Sentinels. All classic books, all great books. I mean, just a great wall. Silver Surfer 1, Origin of Silver Surfer. This book had extra staples. You can see them in the bottom left, top left corners. Um, book was beat. I mean, it's like a 2, a 3 0. First Scorpion, that book kind of caught my eye. 
the Golden Age on the top, that Captain Marvel book. I'm thinking about Dragon Ink Comics when I'm looking at that book. He's probably got that in like a 9-8. Captain America, 117, First Falcon. I mean, these are all books that I have just recently picked up. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at the, the price on that, and I'm like, no, th this is not, these are not, these are graded book prices for raw books. Here's that Captain Marvel. I forgot that I got that close up. I, that's a first appearance of somebody. I can't remember. Jamie would know. Uh, Thor 165 again. First, first him, later becomes Adam Warlock. I mean, I kept coming back to this book. I offered him $300 cash. He turned it down. He would not take anything lower than $350. The book was at $400. I asked him his starting, you know, and he didn't know what it was recently selling for. All right, guys, let's get back to the house and let's show you the haul. All right, everybody, we're back from the comic show. Wow, what a show. That was awesome, man. It was such a breath of fresh air to go to a local show, go to a small show, really focus on the comics, just kind of really talk to some guys that were wanting to make deals, wanting to sell books, and, and got some pretty decent books here. So uh, a lot of these books you guys already saw because you could probably see me carrying my pile around from uh, dealer to dealer. But this first one is Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number six. This is what I was talking about with the uh, little bit of speculation. This is a book that kind of got hot when Sony released the information that they were going to be making a film specifically about this character, the Luchador. Kind of an obscure character, and Bad Bunny, the, uh, the music artist, um, he's like one of like the biggest artists in the entire world, which is crazy. Like if you see like rankings on Spotify or whatever, he's like going to be the star of this movie. I don't know. This is like a beat copy of this. Uh, it's got like a bunch of spine ticks. This is not a high grade copy. High grade copies of this book are like 30 bucks, 35 bucks at the time of this filming. I paid, um, I'll tell you what I paid for these three books. It had it, he had it listed at three bucks. This is Batman 641. This is a great Red Hood cover. That book is just eluding me. Like I cannot, I never can find that book. And especially in a grade, I want it to. My buddy that I've gone to see his collection before, he's got a high grade copy. I just need to buy it from him and just be done with it. Uh, bad thing is, is I already had a copy of this, so I messed up. I also have a copy of this one, but I buy this anytime I can. This is Star Wars number 14. Um, this is an awesome uh, Chewbacca versus Black Karastanen cover. I have no idea how to say that, but it's the best I can do. He was kind of like the best, one of the best parts of the um, Book of Boba Fett show. And we know, well, we're going to see more of him. He was just too cool of a character. Um, I, whenever I see this book, I scoop him up. $5 on, they had for this. So I paid... Um, I think the other two books were listed at three bucks a piece. It was eleven dollars. I gave him a ten dollar bill. Um, I don't know. I, I, that seemed like a, a good good buy. I mean, this is like a fifteen dollar book in a high grade, from what I'm seeing. Um, all right. So this is from the dealer from Huntington who had all the big books. Um, this is some of the books that I got. This is Fantastic Four one twenty eight. This is kind of like a mid-grade uh, copy, not a key, just a whole filler. Five buck price tag on that. This is Fantastic Four number 170. Um, it's got Power Man Luke Cage on the cover. I think he would have $8 on that. That's a higher grade, probably like a six or a seven. And those are the two Fantastic Four books I found. There was also a Fantastic Four book in that dollar bin that I already had but I should have gotten that, looking back on it. This is a 20 cent Hulk, Hulk number 158. Nice little book here, good good quality condition in that from that time period. Five bucks on that. This is Hulk number 195. He's going to uh, Warfare in Wonderland. He's going, he's fighting on the uh, roller coaster. Great cover. What is this, Abomination? Yeah, Abomination on the cover. Nice. Five dollars. Hulk one ninety five. Hulk one uh, two sixty six from nineteen eighty one. This was three dollars. A real high grade newsstand. Nice little book there. And then Hulk two eighty three. 
Got some of the Avengers on there. Five bucks. Incredible Hulk vs. X Factor 336. Um, I guess this is after... This is still when we have uh, Gray Hulk. This is after the McFarlane run. Or this might be still McFarlane. I can't remember. Well, he definitely didn't do the cover, but it... Yeah, I think McFarlane's off of it by this point. This is Hulk 349. Um, it's from 88. And then this is that sweet Hulk uh, thing Doom cover, Hulk 350. That book is nice. Uh, that was $5. This was $5. That was $5. So they were all $5, except for the 266 maybe. And then the Hulk, this is Hulk uh, 393. This is a foil cover. And it's uh, an homage to Incredible Hulk number one. So um, I did a deal for all of those books. I gave him forty dollars cash for the those books. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books. Ten. So four bucks a piece for those. I think that's I think that's all right. The Hulk books maybe maybe only worth like three. I don't know. They, I needed them for the run. Now these are my big books. So these are the books that I got from the um, the actual owners of the store, uh, Clay and Shannon. What is this, Hulk 441? So this is that uh, She-Hulk um, Pulp Fiction homage cover. I think I took that off the wall. Yeah, that, that came down off the wall. I have it in a 9.6. It was up on the wall forever. I might send this one in. This is clean. This has a 9.8 potential. No spine ticks, sharp corners, uh, no color rubs. I mean, you know, CGC, I don't even know anymore. I, I don't know what a 9.8 is anymore, to be honest. So I, I, I'm going to try. And then these, this is, this, I feel like this was my steal of the day. Uh, 100 bullets, number one, two, and three. Um, if you guys have not read 100 bullets, Brian, uh, Brian Azzarello, Eduardo Rizzo, I've done a review on um, 100 Bullets. I think the first volume, now the second volume of the Omnibus is out. It's just an awesome, awesome story. Uh, it's it's like the perfect comic book where you can have these bite-sized stories, um, super gritty, super raw, super adult. Um, it, it's just so believable. The writing is so well done. Characters that are um, like different races, different ethnicities from different walks of life. They're all, it all, it's all so believable. It's all so realistic, just how it's written. Um, it's incredible how Brian Azzarello is able to write characters with such different backgrounds and make them all so believable. That's what a true, incredible writer can do. I've been wanting this 100 Bullets uh, number one specifically for a while. I almost pulled the trigger on a 9.8. I paid $40 cash for these four books. Um, here, I forgot to show the number two and the number three. But the the 100 Bullets number one, the, the, the reason it's a key is the first appearance of Dizzy. Dizzy is the Hispanic um, girl that you see on the cover here. She is throughout the whole story along with Agent Graves. Um, I think, yeah, Graves is kind of the, the main character on the cover there. I love this story. I'll, I'll talk about this till I'm blue in the face. 40 bucks for these. I thought that was a pretty good price. Um, $40 cash. But last, but certainly not least, this was kind of the cream of the crop here. This is the second appearance of Polaris, second appearance of Lorna Dane, X-Men number 50, this is when the actual title, the actual like lettering of X-Men changed to our definitive X-Men lettering that we have forever. I love issues when we get that definitive, um, that change. I think there, and the other big, big change is like when it becomes un the uncanny X-Men. I can't remember what number it is when it switches over. This is an important book. This is a classic Jim Strinko cover. And I, I don't throw that term around lightly. This is a truly incredible cover. This is like a slab-worthy book. A um, couple big things why this book is important. She's the daughter of Magneto. So, like, Magneto's got hella kids. I mean, he's got um, uh, Pietro, 
uh, aka uh, Quicksilver. He's got Wanda, aka Scarlet Witch. He's got Polaris, aka Lorna Dane. I mean, how many children does Magneto got? I, I I don't know actually. I think I know of at least three, but Magneto is getting busy out there. So my thing is is the Magneto family, the Brotherhood of Mutants. I mean, that's got to come to the MCU. That's got to be a thing. And this is such a classic book, regardless of whether it ever manifests on the big screen or the small screen. This is still a classic book that all comic collectors love. So this is a classic Jim Starenko cover. One of the best cover artists of all time. One of my favorites being uh, The Incredible Hulk, number one, um, uh, the uh, Giant Size Annual. This is like a must-have for all X-Men collectors, and I'm glad to have it finally in the collection. As far as price I paid for this, this was $325. I paid him um, like PayPal, friends and family. So for the total, I got uh, the 100 bull. So let's see, so 40, 40, and 10. So it was uh, $400, roughly $415 for these books. I, I think I did pretty well. Guys, how do you think I did? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.